our Bibles and turn to uh, two passages, if you don't mind. Genesis chapter 6 and Hebrews chapter 11. On Wednesday nights, we are working uh, through the book of Genesis uh, expositionally. I think this Wednesday will be in chapter 19. And as I was preparing Hebrews 11, I kept thinking, I think I preached this. I think I preached this. Well, I did when I was in Genesis uh, chapter 6 uh, a few months back on Wednesday nights. And so for some of you, this may be a little bit of a review. But a review is a good thing, right? So Genesis um, <clears throat> chapter 6, and I just want to read a few verses to get a little uh, context. So I will sort of tell you what I'm going to read, then read it, and then jump to the next section. Then we'll go to Hebrews chapter 11. But in Genesis chapter 6, it says in verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the earth, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, which means he was righteous and perfect. He was blameless in his generations. And Noah walked with God, verse 10. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. <clears throat> Make thee an art, ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And notice, if you will, chapter 7. We're going to read 4, 5, 9, and 16. Chapter 7, verse 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I, I will I destroy from off the face of the earth. That literally means to blot out. Verse 5. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And then verse 9. They went in two and two unto, the, unto Noah, into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And lastly, in verse 16, notice, if you will, what it says there. And they went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded them, and the Lord shut him in. So let's go ahead, if you will. And turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm just going to read a few verses here. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'll read one verse. Is that all right? If we just read one verse, we will focus our attention on this one verse. In your outline, you have a lot of review from last week. But we're not going to review. Is that all right? How many of you enjoy review? No? No one enjoy? Well, some people enjoy review. So we'll just focus on one verse. Verse 7. By faith, Noah was warned of God of things not seen as yet. 
moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for these dear folks. We're thankful that you're a God who loves us. Lord, you're always good, even in the trials and tribulations and difficulties and heartaches and pressures of life. We know that we can cast all our care upon you because you care for us. We're thankful, Lord. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. We're thankful, Lord, for, thou, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We're thankful, Lord, that uh, we can cast our cares and we can trust thee and we can lean because underneath are the everlasting arms. I pray you'd minister to our hearts. You would encourage us. You would embolden us and strengthen us with might in the inner man. We pray if there's anyone here who's outside of the ark of safety, we pray that they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And we ask your blessing upon your word this morning. We believe it's infallible, inspired, inerrant. We believe that we have the word of God today, not only inspired originally, but uh, ongoingly per uh, preserved. And we ask your blessing upon, your t upon this time in Christ's name. Amen. Last week, we talked about Abel. He offered a better sacrifice. He offered a bloody sacrifice. Enoch, he loved the Lord, didn't he? He walked, and he walked, and he walked, and he walked right up to heaven. And they looked for him. Did they find him? No. See, every, every believer is on a quest. In this same book. In chapter 11, it talks about strangers and pilgrims. If you're a born-again believer, you are a stranger and pilgrim where? On the earth. We're strangers and pilgrims here. What's a stranger? A stranger is from somewhere else. They're from another country. They're from another homeland. They speak a different language. They live in a different culture. It's strange. It's foreign. Talk to any missionary. You know, they, they grew up here in the States, and they, they're used to our culture and our language, and then they go to the jungles of Africa or the jungles of South America, or, or they go to an Eastern European country, and they have to, you know, they have to learn a, to, to speak fluently and preach and communicate in, in French or German or, or Spanish. It's just, it's a huge cultural change. It takes years to adjust to that. And then after they've been there 40 years and they keep coming back on furlough, and I've, I've seen missionaries struggle for the right English word because for the last 40 years they've been speaking Spanish or German or French. And so we're pilgrims and strangers a stranger is someone who's just passing through. We're not settled down. We're not putting down roots. Because our quest is heaven. Our quest is a new Jerusalem. We know there's going to be a new Jerusalem. They're fighting in Jerusalem today, but someday there's going to be a new Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us very clearly it's going to come down out of heaven someday. I believe that. You say, do you really believe a new one's coming down out of heaven? Absolutely. Listen, if you can believe, if you can believe, and I do, in the first verse in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you can believe that, then you can believe all the prophecies and all the promises and all the warnings. You really, we take the Bible here very, very seriously. I don't really care about your opinion about the Bible, and you don't really care about my opinion about the Bible, do you? We care what the Bible says in context, grammatically, historically, contextually, comparing Scripture with Scripture. So we want to begin right now by way of introduction. By faith, Noah prepared for God's judgment. We live in a culture that does not believe in divine judgment. That's why they're so upset 
and distraught and they march and they pass new laws and they protest because the bad people got away with it. Listen, bad people never get away with anything because they will stand before Almighty God and they will give an account. There's a book of names in heaven and there's a book of works. Is your name in the, is your name in the book? You know what book I'm referring to? The book of, it's mentioned in the book of Revelation. If your name is in the book, you will never, your, your sins will be, are canceled. Your sins were canceled on the tree. You'll never, a Christian will never be judged or condemned for sin. But those that reject Christ, the books will be open. And if, that, if their name is not in the book of names, then they'll be, listen, they'll be judged according to the works and their works are recorded in the books. But we live in a culture that doesn't believe in that. So our culture says, if they escape the judge here, if they escape the attorney here, if they escape the police there, they escape. They don't escape. Do you think Adolf Hitler has escaped? No, no. Sinners never escape. So you don't believe in God, you don't believe in heaven, you don't believe in hell, you don't believe in the beam of judgment. If you don't believe in the great white throne judgment, then you don't believe much and you have no hope. We have hope. The bad people always get it. And I'm not being vindictive. I believe, I believe He's a God of love and He's a God of kindness and he's, and he's a good God, but He's also a God of justice. He is a God of justice. He is a perfect judge. The Bible tells us that God the Father gives all judgment to God the Son. Let's notice first of all in verse 7. Our world does not respond to warnings. But I want you to know that Noah responded to God's warning. Notice what it says here in, verse, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God. God spoke to him. God communicated to him. Folks, this is a divine message. This is an admonition. I'm going to destroy all flesh for their unbridled sin. All flesh. I don't, I don't believe in a local flood. You've seen local floods? wasn't too long ago that a number of roads around here were washed out, right? I believe in a universal flood. If you want to understand the world scientifically, if you really want to understand the fossils biblically, if you want to understand the Grand Canyon scientifically, you just have to, if you take the flood out, it doesn't make any sense. If you include the flood, then everything in the Bible, creation, fall, flood, Abraham, all those patriarchs, that's, that all makes perfect sense. So there's a warning here. There's a warning of sin. Now, do you think Noah had any questions? You know, Noah, you know, Noah basically lived in the desert. He lived between the Tigris and Euphrates River. Do you think he ever went to the lake? Do you think he saw the ocean? Where he lived, there were no oceans and there were no lakes and there were no, you know, they didn't go swim in the frog ponds. Do you think he was a carpenter? I don't think so. You know, I'm no carpenter. We have some carpenters. You know, there's a difference between a, a carpenter that builds houses and a carpenter that builds boats. Are you aware of that? I mean, I don't know. I, I'm really out of my bailiwick here. But to me, in my ignorance, carpenters have, everything has to be, has to be just right. It has to be square. But you go into a, 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 a 30-foot sailing boat that has all this wood, and you go down in the cabin, it doesn't look to me like anything square. It looks to me like things are rounded. It's, it's a different world, I, I would think, and I may get corrected afterwards, uh, a ship's carpenter is a different skill set 
than someone who builds houses. So here Noah, he doesn't know anything about water. He's never seen rain. He hasn't seen a flood. There's no ocean. And he's supposed to believe that, and he's not built a, Has anyone built a boat? Did they have the wooden boat school like they have along the coast of Maine? Listen, this guy is a man of tremendous faith. God said, you do this, and we, we read it. We're not going back to Genesis, but, but, but God said it, and he did it. And he did it. And he did it. Listen, if you do God's will, he will protect you. And he will love you. And he'll take care of you. He, he, did he not shut Noah in? Has God shut you in? Listen, all, I remember years ago, I was talking to my, I, I was going to say my old doctor, but he's six, six months younger than me. I was talking to my old doctor in Lubeck, and I said to him, I said, you help people down here, and I'm trying to help people up there. Isn't that so? See, God's with us down here. And when our, day, our days are numbered, and when he's done with us out down here, he takes us up there. Amen? Don't you, don't you believe that? You know why I preach so much about heaven? Because everything down here is messed up. You say you're being negative. No, no, that's reality. The reality is we're all dying. Reality, there's tragedy and difficulty and accidents and fires and murders and all the negative things and all the pathologies of life and all the negative things of life. But I tell you one thing, in my Father's house are what? Many mansions. See, Noah believed that. And he didn't have a lot of it. Do you think he was checking out the New Testament? Or really much of the Old? Listen, he had to take it. He got a message directly from God to him. And he had to say, okay, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to build an ark. And what did he do for 120 years? Two peas. I don't think there's any plumbing, folks. He preached and he pounded, right? He pounded and he preached. How many converts did he, did he get? But he saved his house. Amen? He saved his house. So he is preparing. He moves. Notice what it says in our text in verse 7. He moved with what? Fear. He hadn't seen floods. He hadn't seen water. He hadn't seen rain. He'd never seen a boat, right? He didn't. Well, God gave him the, the basic dimensions. Had no experience. But he moved, he moved with reverence. He believed God. He respected God. He trusted God. He didn't quibble. He didn't question. He didn't complain. Amen? He didn't grumble. He didn't question the goodness of God. See, God gives you things to do that you can't do, and you can't handle, and you can't cope with. So what do you do? You say, hey, yay and amen, and you move forward, and you trust Him, and He will, listen, He will sustain you, and He will block you in, and He will shut you in. Listen, you'll be crowded to Christ. He brings in the trials, and the difficulties, and the problems. Tribulation worketh patience and patience, experience, and experience, hope. Why? Because the love of God is in my heart as an artesian well. I can trust Him in the darkness. I'm trusting Him in the light, amen? But I can trust Him in the darkness. I can trust Him in the trials. I can trust Him in the difficulties because He's in me and He will go with me all the way. He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Do you believe that? If you don't believe that, you have no hope. You have no hope. The only hope is Christ. The only hope is His work on the cross. Do you know Christ? You say, well, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope I'm going to make it. That's not Bible hope. Hope is an assurance that one you anticipate will come, to, will come to pass. If you come to Christ, if you repent of your sin, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He will come in and live within you. He will give you a new nature. He will give you a new, He'll take away the heart of stone, right? And He will give you a heart of flesh. And you will, He will fill you with His Spirit. And you will be, listen, you will be an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. You may not have rich relatives, 
But if you're an heir with Christ, that's rich ground. Amen? That's our hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So he moved. He was concerned. He had a pious care. He had a reverence for God. And he moved. And he built this boat. Now, how big was it? And could they get all the animals in? Listen, there's animals everywhere world round. I think they got them all in, folks. I know they got them all in. This was a boat that was 400 and give or take a few inches, 430 38 feet long, 73 wide, 44 feet high. Um, the total deck area was 96,000 square feet. It was basically four stories high. It was not built for uh, maneuverability. It was built for stabili stability. Do you believe that? This man feared God. He obeyed God. And what's the sign of the covenant? When you, think, when you think of the Abrahamic covenant, the sign of the Abrahamic covenant was circumcision. It was Jewish ground. What's the sign of this covenant with Noah? The rainbow. I still believe in rainbows. Okay? Still believe in rainbows. I love rainbows, but not rainbow flags. Can I say that? They, they've taken our Bible. Don't you hate when they take our Bible? I know, I'm supposed to be meek and mild. I'm, I'm planning, I'm working on it, okay? But the rainbow is God's covenant. It's God's covenant. He will, listen, He will never destroy the earth with water. He will, he will never do that. But let's keep moving. Let's keep moving in our passage back in verse 7. He prepared an ark to the saving, the saving of his house. That's a, that's an interesting verse. Matter of fact, the Bible says, let, let's turn to a passage. I, I think I'd like to turn there. 1 Peter chapter 3, if you will. I think it's 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 20. I'm jumping in the middle of the context, but I want you to see this. 1 Peter Chapter 3 and verse 20 says, Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited, w waited in the days of whom? Noah. While the ark was a preparing, how long did it take? 120 years. Were in few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. That's an illustration. Listen, the purpose in this passage is not to talk about Noah and the flood. The purpose of this passage is to talk about salvation and baptism. So this is an illustration, but the illustration of, is of a greater truth, and the greater truth is seen in verse 21. Notice this. The like figure, whereunto even baptism also now doth save us, and then we have a parenthetical statement. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. In other words, baptism doesn't save your soul. Baptism is an answer. If you keep reading in the passage, baptism is an answer of a good conscience, right? We're saved according to Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace you are saved. And what's the means? Faith and baptism. No, 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 no. Baptism isn't in Ephesians 2, 2, 8. So this salvation here, I'm not, I'm not going to get uh, technical, but the word, the, the last three words of verse 20, where it says, saved by water. And then in verse 21, it says, baptism doth also now save us. In the original language, those two words are different. 
Now, they're properly translated in our, in our Bibles. I'm not, I'm not correcting the Bible. I'm just saying when, it, when it, uh, the one word refers to deliverance and the one word refers to the salvation of the soul. It's, there is a distinct difference there. So anyway, uh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So this man preached, and this man pounded, and this man, he was a boat builder, and over and over, we see in Genesis 6, he was obedient, he was obedient, he was obedient. Listen, God does not change. There's another text I want you to, to look at. I'd like you to turn, hold your finger here in, in Hebrews, and turn over to Genesis, excuse me, Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 37. And I'm going to pronounce in verse 37, but as in the days of N-O-E, that's, that's the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew Noah. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, no, I don't know how to say, I guess it's Noe, but that's Noah, verse 37. This is Matthew 24. But as in the days of Noah uh, were so, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus Christ is going to come to the earth some day. It's coming to the earth. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse. There's going to be tribulation. There's going to be trials. There's going to be uh, really a worldwide battles and wars and rumors of wars and, and bloodshed. And at the end of that period, he's going to return. Speaks of his coming, his parousia. That's arrival. That's, he touches down. Jerusalem. You check out the Old Testament prophecies. Notice verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Is there anything wrong in eating and drinking beverage and getting married and giving your daughters away? Is, it, is, is, that, all, is that all right to do that? Those, those bad things? How many of you are not going to eat between church and Sunday school? We do those things in the presence of God. We do those things with Him in mind. Give us this day our what? Give us this day our... We thank Him. Ever been in the presence of a group of people and you've got your food and they got your food and they start chowing down and you... What do you do? I, I, I can't eat. Because I haven't blessed the Lord for this provision. Because all things come down from the Father of lights who gives liberally. And, and uh, what do I do? Do you bow your head quietly? Hold your wife's hand? And, and pray to yourself? Or do you say, would you like me to say grace? I've had people, they chowing down and they look at me sitting there with a frozen look on my face during the headlights. And they say, would you like to pray? Oh yes, sir. I like to pray. I can't eat without praying. They don't know the Lord. He's good. He's gracious. He's loving. So it's all right to eat. It's all right to drink. It's all right to marry. It's all right to do those things if we do it in the providence and goodness and thankfulness of God. Amen? Amen. Now, it says in verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not. They didn't know. This is, this is what those people were doing. What was he doing for 120 years? Well, when he wasn't pounding, he was preaching. And how was, how was the response? Were, were people filling the aisle? Were they coming to the mourner's bench? Were they repenting? Uh, they, were, they were partying, and they were going to weddings, and they were doing this. They are going on vacation, and they were, trying, they were retiring to Florida and laying on the beach and getting sunburned. No, were they considering God and warnings and providence and the preacher and this great huge boat? 
Verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Then we have a comparison. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You, you read the Old Testament prophecies. You read the end of the book of Revelation. And when He comes back to the earth to set up His, His kingdom, there's going to be some terrific battles and blood is going to be flowing because those people rejected the Messiah. Very quickly, let's move on. Let's go back to Hebrews, if you will. We have seen Noah's response to God's warning. We see Noah has condemned the world. And notice, if you will, the end of verse 7. And became the heir of righteousness, which is by what? Faith. According to faith, he was saved. Amen? According to faith, he preached all those years with no results. But you know, he saved his family. That's your first mission field. Your first response is your family. He was a just man. He was perfect in his generation. And he walked with God. The Bible says... In 2 Peter 3, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt. Another word for the, for the word elements is the word dissolved. They shall melt with a great heat. So I'm, I'm challenged to honor all of us, especially the men. Be like Noah. He said, well, I can't do it. It's hard to be a leader. You know, some people follow from behind. Are you aware of that? Leaders, real leaders are out front. Gentlemen, be, be godly leaders. Be men of prayer. Be men of the book. Be men of serving Christ. Be men of, well, be in church. But, but you're here, right? Okay, but go ahead. Keep doing it. Uh, be in church and serve the Lord as for me in my house. We will serve the Lord. Let's be like Noah. Let's, let's believe God's promises and believe God's warnings because if we do that, if we obey Him, you know what He'll do? He'll shut us in and He'll protect us. Amen? Brother Bob.